about three years of designing and building out this workspace, I finally decided to make a video and share it with you guys. But before we do that, I wanna introduce myself. My name is Joe and I am a filmmaker based in South Florida. I own a video production company by the name of Driven Films, where I produce work for automotive-based clients. On this YouTube channel, I provide honest, to the point and unbiased reviews of camera gear that I use out in the field. Now, if that's something that you are interested in, please do me a favor, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of my upcoming videos. Now with that out of the way, we're gonna talk about some goals that I had in mind when I put this workspace together. Now the first goal I had was that I wanted it to be a space that I enjoyed being in. But I also wanted this space to reflect me as a person by bringing in design elements and items that make me happy and bring back strong positive memories. Also, I wanted it to last a long time, and that means not cheaping out on the things that I use on a daily basis, like the desk, the chair, or the computer itself. Just about three years ago, I took the plunge and I decided to go into business for myself, and that meant working from home practically full time. If I'm not on a shoot, I'm here in the house. Whether it's producing a YouTube video or editing some client work, whatever it is, I'm here for the better part of the day. So first up, we're gonna start with the desk. Now, the desk is the focal point of the room and I did go with something pretty unconventional. I ended up going with a dining room table from Crate and Barrel. Now this is the Big Sur dining room table. And I don't think it's available anymore. I believe they've discontinued it in the past year or so, but this is a solid European oak desk. It's about 85 inches wide and about 40 inches deep. This table gives me more than enough space for all of my peripherals, notebooks, monitors, computer tower, just about anything I'd possibly need, and then some. I don't like a very cluttered desk, so I didn't want something too small. Now there is a downside to a table being this huge or a desk being this big, and that's that it takes up a lot of space. And I had already owned the table from my previous house, so that being said, I do wish that the table was a little bit smaller, possibly not as wide. However, I'm very happy with the fact that it is incredibly sturdy, it's incredibly well built, and it's gonna last a lifetime. So whenever you're purchasing a desk, I think it's important for you to consider it as an investment. Now, speaking of an investment, we're gonna talk about the chair. For the chair, I chose to go with the Herman Miller Embody. Now, this chair is not a cheap chair whatsoever. However, the way I look at it is chiropractor bills are far more expensive over time than investing in a chair. Again, I'm in this office a lot of hours. I don't have a standing desk, so I am in this chair quite a bit. I think it's important to have a chair that's gonna provide some support and also be very durable. Also promote proper posture and also have a very good warranty if things start to break down. So yes, the chair is expensive, but I think it's important for you to invest in the long term, called adulting. So next up is the PC setup. For my PC, I am using a custom built workstation. For the case, I went with the NZXT S340 Elite. Now I don't always keep the lighting on, and when I do, it's almost always static, but having the option to turn the lighting on and off when color grading is a must. So if I want to impress my six-year-old, I could just crank up the RGB and make it a full rainbow going all around spinning like crazy but more often than not, I just leave it on a very subtle color combination or I just turn it off completely. At the heart of the system is an Intel i7-6950 on an Asus X99 Deluxe 2 motherboard. To provide the muscle for working in DaVinci Resolve, I have two NVIDIA GTX 1080 Ti GPUs, and I have 64 gigabytes of Corsair Dominator RAM, which helps me to power through RAM-intensive programs like Photoshop or DaVinci Resolve or Adobe After Effects. My system drive is a one terabyte Samsung 970 Evo M.2, and it's solely there to house the operating system and my applications. Now for projects that I'm currently working on, I have a two terabyte Sabrent Rocket M.2 installed into a PCIe slot, as well as two one terabyte Samsung 850 Evo SSDs. Now, obviously there needs to be a place to store all this footage once the projects are done. And for that, I have three 10 terabyte G technology drives, and these are external USB-C drives. This allows me to offload footage 
for the short term. And then when it comes to storing footage and files long term, I have a NAS system from Synology. Now this NAS system is absolutely amazing. I love the fact that it has over 45 terabytes of storage with two disk redundancy. Now, when I first bought this NAS system, I thought that five drives would be enough, and I quickly found out that, unfortunately, that's not the case. So I ended up having to purchase the five bay expansion unit. Next up, I have two monitors for this setup. I have an Alienware 34 inch gaming monitor, and I also have a 27 inch 4K LG monitor. I have these mounted to the desk with arms. Since I'm not using the stands that come with the monitors, this allows me to free up a ton of space on the desk overall. I have a lot more surface space. I also love the fact that I can move the monitors back and forth if needed. If I need to bring the monitor closer, I could do that. If I need to move it out of the way, I could do that as well. In the future, I do plan on ditching both of these monitors and going with something a little bit more color accurate like a BenQ or even an ISO. In terms of peripherals, I'm using a Razer keyboard and mouse combo. I'm using the Razer Lancehead Wireless Edition and also the Razer Black Widow mechanical keyboard. One thing I love about the keyboard is that it comes with the very comfortable wrist rest, which helps to keep carpal tunnel syndrome at bay. But I also like that it has the RGB feature. And again, I don't necessarily use any crazy rainbow colors. I just keep it on a single static color for most of the time. Also on the desk, I have the Blackmagic micro panel for DaVinci Resolve. I didn't know how much I would love this thing until I started grading with it. And for those who are generally happy with grading with your mouse and keyboard, I suggest you try this panel out and just see how much it changes your overall workflow when grading in DaVinci Resolve. I can't say enough about it. It's more of a thing that you have to try for yourself, but I think it's a very well-built panel and it is absolutely worth the money. And it's honestly increased my productivity when it comes to color grading. When doing sound design for my videos, I think it's important to have a good set of studio monitors. So for that, I went with the Yamaha HS8 studio monitors, and those are routed into a Yamaha AG03 USB audio interface. I also have the matching subwoofer from Yamaha, and I can tell you what, I'm pretty sure that my neighbors hate me when I crank the volume up. When it's time to put on a pair of headphones, I have the Sennheiser HD 650s, which I just run directly through the Yamaha AG03. For those times that I want to go wireless, I have the Bose QC35s, and these are amazingly comfortable headphones. I will say that the Bose QC35s are the most comfortable headphones that I have ever owned. When it comes to running a business and a YouTube channel, being organized and staying on task is very important. So I choose to use the Get Stuff Done Planner. And this planner happens to be one of the better planners that I've used and it helps to keep me organized and on task and it helps to overall keep my thoughts and processes in check. I also keep a secondary notebook on hand for any time I need to do some sketching or additional notes that won't necessarily fit into the planner itself. Now, speaking of staying organized, underneath the desk, I have a wheeled filing cabinet from Crate & Barrel. I felt that the overall look and feel of this filing cabinet was honestly one of the best on the market and it was quite affordable. Inside the filing cabinet, I keep important documents, extra cables, pens and pencils, any sort of office tools that I need, batteries, whatever it is, the filing cabinet is home to a bunch of different stuff that helps me stay organized and keeps things off of my desk. When it comes to interior design, whether it's your home office, your bedroom, your living room, or even your kitchen, I feel it's important for you to design a space that reflects you as a person. So with that being said, I chose to film my home studio with objects that reflect me as a person, but also help to evoke positive memories and just simply make me smile, but also make me reflect on my life thus far. Whether it's the home run baseball that my dad caught at Yankee Stadium for me when I was 12, a book from an author whose words inspired me, gifts from loved ones, a photo of my son graduating into kindergarten, or even my all-time favorite comic books, or statues of video games that I've dumped an obscene amount of time into, all of these things reflect me as a person. And I think that it just adds some simple personality to the workspace especially considering that now more than ever, people are working from home, I think that it's very important for you to design a space that is welcoming, that's inviting, it's comfortable, and it invokes positive feelings. And making that space reflect you is very vital to achieving those goals. 
Now moving on to what I consider one of the best additions to this office, and that is my gear workbench. This is where I store most of my gear. Unfortunately, not all of the gear will fit. For instance, the case for my Movi Pro is as big as me, and it just won't fit in this space whatsoever. So I just keep it in the garage. To build out the workbench, I simply used a metal shelf from Home Depot, and I got some outdoor carpet with some carpet glue, and I glued the carpet and stapled it to the wood panels of the workbench. I think this gave a much more appealing look than just having the bare wood. I also picked up a sheet of plywood and carpeted that and used it as a back wall so that I could mount the pegboard, as well as use it to Velcro things like battery chargers, tools, cleaning supplies as well. What I use the pegboard for is to store gear and items that I use quite often that I don't necessarily want to store away in boxes. You'll find mounting plates, my Ronin S, my mat box, as well as bins for lens caps, filters, and media storage. Sticking with the theme of staying organized, instead of random gear just sitting in piles on tabletops, I choose to keep and organize my gear inside of bins that I picked up from Home Goods. Now here's a quick tip for anyone who wants to stay organized, but you don't happen to have an Ikea or a container store near you. You can check out places like Target, Marshalls, Home Goods, Ross, or TJ Maxx. All these places have very affordable and honestly pretty good looking products that you can use to stay organized. Personally, I got these bins from Home Goods and they provide a nice look to the workbench, but they also serve a purpose. They store all the loose pieces of gear, cables, cleaning supplies, rigging parts, and again, help to keep me organized when it comes to storing my gear. For those of you who have made it through this entire video, I wanna leave you with one simple tip. Whenever you're designing a workspace, office, studio, setup, whatever you wanna call it, keep in mind that you are designing that space simply for you. You're not designing it for Reddit, you're not designing it for social media or your buddies. The simple fact is that you are going to be in this space and you need to enjoy it. Whether you're putting fancy RGB lights all over the place, or using very classy artwork on the walls. Whatever it is, make that space yours because you're gonna be sitting in it and spending time in this place and you need to be happy with it. I hope you guys enjoyed this office tour and took some inspiration from it. And if you did, stick around because in the coming weeks, I'm gonna be doing a tour of my YouTube studio. And of course, please give this video the thumbs up, drop a comment below with what you liked best about this office space. And of course, please hit that subscribe button, tap the bell icon next to it so you don't miss out on any of my future videos. Until next time, take care.